Uh, good morning. <laughs> You're so very welcome to Awaken the Heart. And I have a very special guest with me this morning, Mystic David Hoffmeister. Thank you, David, Thank for joining you. us. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it feels so <laughs> lovely to have a studio and walk down the hall and come in and just be in presence with us. And I, I have no set agenda for today. I can see all of these wonderful devoted ones who've been joining us showing up on screen here. We've welcome to everybody on LM Virtual. Welcome to everybody on David's Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> We're just covering all bases here because uh, it always feels like a delight to have you in the house with us. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I agree. It's, I love this interactive feel we've got on the show. <laughs> it's like having the Brady Bunch at home with you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hmm. So you've just come back from a really spontaneous tour of California and I've just been watching and it just felt like it was you were just so well received and so spontaneous, almost like there were whispers on the wind or a feeling of those just arriving from all kinds of avenues, as well as those that have been following and devoted for years and listening to you. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, it felt like it was a spontaneous year coming in and then that is something that uh, early on, back in the 1990s, uh, that I just was doing a lot of spontaneous travel. There would still be things mm. being arranged, but they would be arranged pretty short notice. Mm. I'd call like a friend up, Ruth Hanna in uh, St. Louis, and and I'd say, I think I'm ready to come out that way to do a gathering from Cincinnati to St. Louis. And she'd say, okay, how many days do I have? And I'd say, maybe two days or one day, and she'd have 50 people mm. over at John Hutkins' house, and we you could just hear a pin drop. We would have these deep mm. gatherings. And so that's kind of the way this went. I was down in Mexico. I was feeling like a swing through California, called Nikita up. She said she'd been praying out loud mm. for a, something. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it just sprung into action. So it's beautiful. It, it feels so natural that way because it feels like whoever's available and ready to answer the call then, it's very deep. It is uh, miraculous that you land into their life in that moment and therefore everything's facilitated. Because I watched it, it was like everything started to land on a Friday and, and you guys were, were there by Wednesday and everything just filtered in and there was no sense, even from this home team here who puts things out or shares, there was just this feeling of if, if I lifted up a photo that was ready to go, it was... <laughs> Someone took it from my hand, yeah. and it ver felt very joyful, and it felt, again, like that vibrancy that, that truly is the immediacy of what you're offering, and I feel that's very important, too, that it's not sometime in the future. Sometime next year might be good. I'll work it in. It's like it's now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been reading from the course uh, section from the text and a workbook lesson, and, and actually, uh, I just, I think it was yesterday, was the immediacy of salvation. That mm. was the... The title of the, the subsection of the course, and it's so vibrant. You know, be not content with future happiness, for you have cause for freedom now, and mm. and that you only feel this sense of guilt and fear when you put uh, salvation or forgiveness off in the future. So it's a very immediate experience. Mm. It's interesting too that I've come here, and then I was just. Uh, on there, and I glanced down at the calendar, and I saw February 29th, so <laughs> leap year, this is... This We're is already out of year. time. And this is the leap year day, uh, <clears throat> where the an, an extra day is added. But I like the leap part. That's right. the part that jumped out, not mm, the, the, the day time. or the years or whatever, but the leap part. And I feel like that's all the Spirit's doing, is, is calling into a leap into the holy instant. And... And everything else, you know, starts to just fade away as, as unimportant. All the things that you thought you did in your life, that you accomplished, doesn't matter. The things that you didn't accomplish, doesn't matter. Mm. The things that were left on your bucket list, that you never got to do, doesn't matter. It's the holy instant is, is really all that matters. Uh, living in this joy and this happiness and this innocence. And we're invited like little children. and. And I think too on the travels, I had we were well received, but uh, you know, having a lunch there, four and a half hour lunch with Judy Scutch and William Whitson. Mm. Whit was talking. He's eighty seven now, and he his bright white hair, sparkly white hair, and his sparkly eyes twinkling. 
reminded me of my grandfather a, a bit uh. with uh, in his 80s and twinkly eyes. And he was saying to me, um, yeah, he had this dear friend that, of Judy and his that, who was a Course in Miracles student from Sweden. And when the Swedish translation finally came out, the man had read it in English, but when the Swedish translation finally came out, they sent him a copy. Mm. And in his later years, right before he died, before he passed away, um, he would read the Swedish edition and he would keep it with him, so he would hold it. And his he started to forget, his memory started to fade all about this world. He would hold on to this Swedish book and he could he couldn't even speak in senses anymore. And so uh, by the time that wit got to him, basically he could barely string together a few words. And the three words that he could string together, when someone would point to, what's that in your hands that he was clutching? Mm. He'd go, voice of God, voice of God. No. <laughs> three words he could pull together out of losing all his memories of the world. Voice of God, voice of God. And then... Um, his wife, who saw he was becoming more childlike and more innocent as he was, you know, going into this state that some people talk about as like Alzheimer's or dementia, um, basically she, he wanted to play and so she bought him a head, bought and had installed a, a big sandbox. So she, he would sit in the sandbox playing and she would get in the sandbox and play with him and he would put he had like little toys and little blocks and he'd put them together and again he would um, string together three words in the little sandbox, City of God, City of God. Mm. So his mind was getting so simple that he couldn't retain all the, the sights and sounds and like Jesus talks about in Lesson 184, you know, you live by symbols and you've made symbols for everything and he's, he's describing the fragmented world as as crazy, as chaos, as distortion, and now Witt was pondering, he said, I, somehow I think the real world and true perception is closer <laughs> to <castle>. my friend <laughs> who seemed to be diagnosed with, mm. with Alzheimer's. So that's important because um, I was talking to Nikita when we were coming back and I was saying it's kind of like in, uh, in the United States we have horse racing and there's the Triple Crown, and uh, Preakness, and Belmont Stakes, and uh, the Kentucky Derby. And when a horse wins all three of the top races, it's called winning the Triple Crown. Mm. And there's a very famous racehorse uh, called Secretariat, who breezed to victories easily in the top three um, races. And then, then what? And people go, what happens when, when you win the Triple Crown? then you go out to pasture and basically you get to just graze. Uh, <laughs> you, you get the green grass and you go out to graze. So, so we've thought for years, you know, we have the first Course in Miracles Monastery. I've always thought it's kind of like a pasture. It's like grazing, even though there's not often a lot of grass out there. It's still, still good for horses. It's yes. still good for horses and, and it's good for those that have run their race, but I actually feel more drawn into the mystical, still aspects of the mind, because that's how God is experienced, is in the stillness. And so when the racing is done, then the stillness is what calls, and mm. and that's where it's all headed. Yeah. And I think you've been a wonderful demonstration of even those seeming, those seeming tears of what is involved. And it's not before you go into mysticism, but that the Course has been this deep, um, consistent um, um, baseline from which the mind can leap, take that leap. And, and, and yet it, the invitation is to take the leap, not to yeah. stay in studying, but very much to absorb and come in and then take the leap into that yeah, trust. Yeah, yeah it's, not, it's not like you segment your life up, it's more like you just deepen into the, the presence of God's love. Mm -hmm. And then when you do, what comes out of your mouth will seem, I think, sublime. It will be a blessing to the whole universe. Mm -hmm. And so, Jesus was a very public mystic, and we've had some 
public mystics along the way and the way the life of David, the parable of David's played out, that's been more of a public mystic. Mm -hmm. Although there were aspects like with Jesus of going off to Hermitage or going off to the Mount mm -hmm. and, and re reclining from, you know, participating in, in things and activities. But, but actually it's a state of mind that's, you know, mm -hmm. not tied into form at all. So it's not a matter of being active or inactive. It's really having a still mind. That's what it's all about. Right. And I've really always appreciated that with you, even with my own functions seemingly here. You're going, you know what PR stands for, Sarah? And it's like, peace reigns, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, so that um, even I would be constantly reminded of what the invitation was for, even what the backdrops were for, you know? And it's so generous because even though we have conversations or we have meetings, like... The invitation is very clear, and it's just that it it has to be the f to the foremost the tickle of my heart, so I can accept it and take mm -hmm. that leap. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Just remembering the purpose, regardless of what seems to be happening, because the ego temptation is just to get lost into the form and the actions, or lost in the roles, mm. and that's just the temptation. And so it takes mind training, it takes vigilance initially to to pull your mind up to that still realm, that expansive realm, and just to stay there and mm. not feel the need to react and respond to the world anymore. Mm. Well, and also on a practical note, I've been having this experience as we've been pre preparing what is the, the next book that we're going to bring out, which is actually The Mystical Teachings of Jesus. And um, we're going to be launching that in the next week, and I've just been having this experience that it is... It is literally being a demonstration, even in trying to bring it forth, of its out-of-pattern nature, of its call into that experience, and of its devotion to the presence. It's There isn't even a way in which we're able to do our usual way of doing anything with it. It's happening in its own way. And even the cover is, is just such that deep presence that you're talking about, like of stillness with Jesus on the cover it's so beautiful that I just feel like it's it's demanded the call of my own heart like I've had to come into an experience just to even even make the website with mm -hmm. Eric anything mm -hmm. it's just it's got this and I just I feel it's such a beautiful book and it's been such um you know it's it's bringing you into that mysticism that that you're speaking about and it is what is left singing in the heart when mm -hmm. you would be out to pasture in mm -hmm. the yeah you know. yeah i think it's i think mysticism and presence in order to be what it is in terms of its relationship to the world of images is is that it's extremely practical so everything comes from practicing the presence i would say that's that's an everything is an outflow of practicing the presence mm. So even the origins of this book, um, I remember, the, as far as content goes, back probably around um, 1994, or perhaps even a little bit earlier than that, I, I was working with a small group of students, and they'd been raised in the, the Western world, the Western civilization, we call it the, the Judeo-Christian uh, upbringing. Mm. And so they they were working with the course, but they found the course uh, a bit steep, uh, almost daunting in its languaging and its uh, unwavering uh, teachings that seemed to be otherworldly, way beyond their daily experiences. And so the first uh, idea, the seed of this book that is now going to be published is The Mystical Teachings of, of Jesus, mm -hmm. Uh, started off as a request, uh, just like the course started off as a request, where Bill Thetford said there, there just has to be a better way of living compared to what they were living in their professional lives at the Columbia Presbyterian mm -hmm. Medical Center. And he thought Helen might laugh at him when he said that there has to be a better way, but she said, no, you're right, Bill, and, and I'll join you in finding it. And with the group of students, they were saying, "There is there anything that can help us jump from our training with the Bible mm. to the Course? Because it seems like jumping across the Grand Canyon. Mm. Talk about a leap year. This, this was a leap 
from uh, of of consciousness and awareness from their everyday experiences with the Bible mm. and its teachings to the Course. And so I said, oh yes, I'll get right on it. And when I prayed, I received instructions from Jesus, you know, to come up with these questions. And then an answer to the questions would be passages from the Bible followed by passages from the Course. Mm. And so that book was called The Bible Course Companion. Mm. And that that was essentially the same content. And then uh, my meaning in scripture, mm -hmm. as it was opened up more for beyond the students, mm. for those that we were reaching, and uh, your painting of an angel mm. going on the cover, that was, I guess, healing in mind. Healing but, in mind, yeah. But my meaning in scripture, we, I guess we didn't have any kind of image. We had a big, image. big burst of light. Burst we were of going light. to the light with right. that one. Going to the light with Honestly. that one. Yeah. And then um, it, it came apparent to us that perhaps it would have even a little bit broader circulation and years had passed and to the point where there was a readiness for these ideas for people that were familiar with the Bible, mm. maybe had a sense that there was some clarity needed or some focus or some deeper insights and then this mm. book emerged. So even like the Course, it was it emerged from something that from a call for the practical, mm. and I think that's the way our our daily lives have to be too. We have to to have them be a response through the guidance of mm. a call for the practical. I mean, I definitely felt a call for it. I was given to support in the um, bringing together and just making sure our quote numbers were right and everything for it. And I remember sitting down, and even though I'd been raised a Catholic, I remember feeling. I don't know enough about the Bible. I don't know what I need to know. And I was sitting in the Peace House in Ireland and I went, I need to learn about the Bible and went ding dong. And I went downstairs and the Jehovah's Witnesses are at the door mm -hmm. saying, we want to talk to you about the Bible. I said, come right in, come in. And, and so for me, it was a practical call into an experience that I needed to have. Like there, there was a healing and a forgiveness mm -hmm. opportunity for passages from the Bible or from ideas of Jesus that I'd had or anything that needed to be just just allowed to dissolve really it's yeah. even the healing isn't so active it's just in this juxtaposition of the way the passages are put together it just clarifies something in the mind that allows you to go oh. yeah like yeah. it just is a an outcome. yeah you can sure feel it I think it's too it's a miracle as I look at it it's a miracle uh, that this book is getting published actually because um, anybody who knows anything about typical publishing knows that uh, if you want to quote something from another book, um, sometimes you're allowed a small percentage of 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 a quote from another book as as long as it's a percentage of the book you're writing, as long as you annotate it mm -hmm. correctly and properly and everything. But I don't know if if our viewers know that that with with so much of the book coming mm -hmm. directly from the, course. the published Course mm -hmm. in Miracles that we had to get permission. But again, that's where Judy and Witt and Deborah came through and said, yes, go ahead. Yeah, that they really a, felt it. That was like a miraculous, really. And it was a, a, a great vote of confidence in, in, in what you had initially wanted to do for those initial students and then for everyone was just share and clarify and we're using the King James version of the Bible, which is the same version that the Course uses yeah. as well. And so it's so easy to see that the same voice has been speaking for eternity, and and now there's just clarity in in being able to have the ears to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, it was interesting during this lunch um, that I had with Judy and Whit. People, some people know the history of the Course where. There's now four published versions of the course, and the the copyright um, proceedings. I think there was like seven lawsuits going at one point, and and Judge Sweet, you know, putting the Criswell edition, saying no, it was out in the public domain. But in talking with Judy, um, it was kind of interesting because I had heard uh, a while back that that there was still a lawsuit running, and I was like, mm. what? There's still a lawsuit running? It was over in Germany, right? And uh, they told us that six months, Judy was saying, after Ken passed, the, the court in Germany ruled 
in favor of the original copyright. But their ruling was, was this, that, that w when you have a copyright on something, you have it for life. Their, their ruling was that the copyright cannot ever be overturned. Uh, so that therefore everything that was copyrighted previously is now under copyright again. And they said in this crazy American courts that <laughs> think they can just <laughs> overturn and rule on things. So it was, I thought, well this is kind of interesting. Now right. this is like a full circle around. Uh, that was quite fascinating to me because to me, uh, when when Helen uh, had her books and and they decided to publish it on a broader scale, uh, they did try to, you know, go and submit the copyright originally, but anybody who knows anything about copyright law knows that you can't have a, a book or anything published by a divine being that's copyrighted. So you can imagine going into the United States Copyright Office and saying, uh, here, we, mm -hmm. want, we have a book that we would like um, copyrighted, and, and who's the author? Um, Jesus Christ. They said, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not allowed. Mm. We, you can copyright things in this planet, <laughs> but not that. Mm. And so then they had to go back and, and, and they were going to put anonymous. And it's, can we put anonymous uh, on there? It's quite interesting. That's like yeah. almost from the 12 step program. Yeah. Can we put anonymous on there? They said, you can put anonymous, but you still have to put a name of a person. Right. A person uh, after that, so they would, don't put anonymous and Jesus Christ. Don't try to pull this stuff on us. So anonymous Helen Shuckman, and then uh, it was it was sent in and it was copyrighted. And so to me, what's up behind all that was is just to keep the the consistency of the thought system in a world where everything seems to be broken apart in a cosmos where everything is fragmented into pieces. Mm. There was an intention to keep this, you know, divine scripture, you could call it, mm. you know, intact. So mm. to me, that's beautiful. And also, I, I like that line in the Course where Jesus says, this Course has everything that you need. That was particularly helpful for me because I was, you know, in prolific reading all kinds of different things. And it really was just like a little symbol, like, relax. Mm and study, and practice, and apply this, and it'll take you where you really want to go. Mm. And so those are all very important symbols in terms of uh, waking up. I think those have, a, have an importance. Yeah, I, I, and we felt very happy to honor that integrity. I was I watched again recently part of the, the story of A Course in Miracles, which is so beautiful mm -hmm. of them making that commitment out front and the, looking around the room and realizing, Oh, it's us. It's us mm -hmm. that will keep it all together, mm -hmm. you know, and such love and devotion. And I just like my heart swelled when I saw those photographs of the lunch and and heard some of your talks and just that. And, and I just feel we have that same integrity and devotion to bringing forth this message and the the honor of it, the yeah. honor of it, of saying, you know, and also this whittling away of undoing of, of uh, at least that I've been experiencing is so that the discernment is not of me that I can just be following like they would this prayer of what now what's helpful how can I truly serve and I just feel like there's this huge openness with all of us here and this kind of excitement of of what it is now and and how to bring it forth just to share it for ourselves for this experience yeah yeah I think it's the presence of love is behind everything, orchestrating the use of all the symbols. And I really feel that uh, with Judy, with Wit, with uh, with those that have been part of the first generation of bringing the Course here, and then um, as Judy's 84 and uh, Wit is 87, there was a sense, of a little bit of a feeling of passing the torch. And um, the last time I was in the Bay Area, I had uh, lunch with Tamara, mm. her daughter, and uh, and also Bob Rosenthal. I've had some nice uh, email exchanges. Uh, he sent me his book mm. to kind of review one time, and so Tamara and Bob will be taking over for those um, as far as running things. Uh, they've done such a great job, namely Judy and then her husband Whit, and then Bob Scotch, who's 90, I believe. Mm. So so it was like a passing the torch, and, 
and really that's the feeling is that that um, we're keeping the integrity of the presence and the message and the depth of the message it's not so much about trying to control anything in form mm. because uh, everyone's aware that that when you try to control anything in form then you can't forgive and control at the same time so there's a great allowance to mm. just watching the world and letting all things work together for good as the spirit is using them but also the presence uh, that's behind the message is just felt so strong and that's that's definitely what I feel mm. I, I, I just had coming to my mind that scene in the book of Eli it's one of my favorite scenes of any movie where he's been taking this book and taking it across mm. the coast and he seems to have to defend it and everything and then there's this moment where there's a girl and there's there's some way in which he can um, save her it seems and and he seems to throw the book to one side and she's shocked because she's aware of he's been teaching her what it's mm -hmm. about and how important it is and how he's given his life for it and then and she's after she goes I can't believe you did what were you thinking and he goes well, the thing is, I've been reading what the book has been saying, mm -hmm. and I've been taking mm -hmm. it into my heart. Yeah. You know, and at this point, we, we're not aware that he's absorbed the entire book, mm -hmm. so he's carrying mm -hmm. it within his heart. But that mm -hmm. the demonstration, like he's a, what of what was, you know, just wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful yeah, that's scene. it. We're called to be the demonstration of love, mm. and really, that means to not judge anything in form, but to join with the with the atonement principle to join with the, you might say, the judgment of the Holy Spirit, which is really the guidance uh, of the Holy Spirit, unwinding the mind from the belief of all judgments, mm. and then opening up to the last judgment, which growing up Christian, that always had kind of a negative connotation, but it's not uh, God judging at all, it's really it's really the, the Spirit's judgment of, or it's the judgment of truth on illusion. It is not real and does not exist. So uh, the, if anybody says you know they're not in favor of judgment, well the, the judgment of truth on illusion, it is not real and does not exist, is what you're going for. And that is a very loving, joyful, that's like a cause of celebration. That has no negative connotations in it. It has no destruction. Mm. It just means the truth is true and only the truth is true. And that's good. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. That's marvelous. That's spectacular. That's that's the the happiest uh, statement you could ever make. But it's not a personal statement. There are no persons that make that statement. Mm. And so that's what we're opening and and truly living is that that presence. That's the blessing. <laughs> Would you like to sing a song for us? Sure. That could fit with the theme. That would be lovely. And I should say that the last stop on the tour, the, the woman Diane had invited us to stay at her home. Never had done anything like that before, but received an email from Eric, and just mm, I heard that part she of just week. said, "Oh my gosh!" And she said, "I'm going to call, and I'm going to invite." And she was she, when I got back mm. here to Utah, she wrote a big. Beautiful thank you letter, just how what a wonderful experience it was. So that's, mm. that's how the miracles work. That was Diane. That was Diane. Yeah. I had met her when we went up and I think to do something up, I th was it Petaluma area or something, with, and it was a one on one that you had helped arrange for me. Yeah. And yeah. then this was over a year later, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was in Center Fell. That was, yeah. That's beautiful. She co she contacted me many times after that too. Just uh, just going through a lot of stuff with her daughter. Mm -hmm. like said. And, yeah. This song is called "Only Love." <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. 
only love, only love, only love, there is only love. The past is gone, and I have been so mistaken in everything I saw. Nothing was real The past is gone And all has been forgiven It all has been My imagination Only love Only love Only love Past is gone, no more future. Time and space disappeared. It was just a dream. Here or there, in or out, it's all the same. No more bearing. about we've been talking about uh, the meeting with Judy but the translation is kind of interesting because it seems to be a translation of words from one language to another mm. and everyone knows that a good translation would be one in which uh, the meaning that are con is conveyed by one set of words is conveyed by another set of words so the the meaning stays the same even though the words are changing. And really that's very parallel to how the Holy Spirit works. That the Holy Spirit 
It's just the presence of love, the remembrance of love in our mind. And then that's why it has to come out in seemingly different ways, as there's different people, places, circumstances, situations, the presence of love stays the same, but the words are changed in order to, to convey the meaning. And so, you might say that that's really the whole point of A Course in Miracles. It's not necessarily to become a, a scholar or, uh, you know, to be able to recite the Course, but it's just to let your mind go into that presence of love, whereby you're a conduit for that love to pour through. Mm -hmm. And it can come in so many different forms, and will need to come in different forms because of the different situations that appear. Mm -hmm. So I think um, that's going to be like a theme as we move forward this year. It's something that's been very important to me because in traveling to 44 countries and meeting so many people, it's not about hanging on to concepts, it's not about um, even blowing the horn about certain people, places, things, events in this world. It's more about that flexibility, that fluidity of of being in alignment with Spirit and letting the Spirit come through, like a clear, pure conduit, and then it's felt, the presence is felt mm. through that. And uh, when I landed, um, the first movie I saw was uh, something like, which, which country to invade? Oh yeah, Where to Invade Where Next. Where to Invade Next, mm. it was Michael Moore movie, Where to Invade Next. Such an unusual title for a movie, <laughs> but but it was very, very helpful because you could feel the, the presence of love, the, the lightness, the humor, and you could see, so to speak, love in action, where there was a, a strong devotion among the places that Michael Moore visited to putting the love into practice. Mm. Uh, not just talking about love as, as a theology or as a high <laughs> ideal, but actually living that experience. And, and he went to government, he went to uh, prisons, a school in, in France, and uh, he just was going around to many, many different settings where you could feel the love in action. And really, that's what we're doing, is we're letting love come through us as a demonstration so that it, we convince our own mind, our own psyche, our own consciousness of of that love, that we are love. And when Judy and I were talking, mm. she was saying, yeah, it goes beyond what we would call collaboration into we are literally the same self. We are all the same self. And treating everyone with the same love and respect and reverence that you would have for yourself mm. as the Christ, as the living Christ, as the presence of love. So to me that's what this is all about and, and the forms or just backdrops, you know, no form is better than another form, no place, no person, no situation is any better than another. Uh, and once you have an experience of that, then you will no longer be seeking for a better form. Mm. That's pretty much the curse of the ego, is things would be better if they were different in form. So if you could, took the entire ego philosophy, it's just this pursuit of an imaginary better form, and there isn't a better form. So you can call off the search, you can end the seeking, you can can rest uh, in a divine sense, you can really rest in a state of acceptance without having to spin the hamster wheel round and round and round, um, as if there's more, there's better, as if you need to prove something, you know, we're really realizing that's just a game, and the game is over. Mm. Yeah, it's beautiful. I've been having this experience of, in the song, the word that stood out the most was no barriers, um, that Eric just sang, and just that feeling of coming into a softness, and that that the function is really just seeing anywhere I would keep up a barrier, because they're falling. Uh, anywhere I would keep it up. Mm -hmm. they, they're just falling themselves. Mm. And just, and that's why it, that even that film is so sweet with the idea of invading, you know, yeah. <laughs> invading. It's like, I, I, 
I don't know, since I've been very small, more than understanding anything, it was just that feeling of not wanting there to be all this division between things. Yeah. And, and and now there's like I have this practical way to allow my mind to soften into it and I just feel really grateful. Yeah. Just feel very grateful. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's very joyful. I I was thinking the other day that it's this old uh, Barry Manilow songs but um and the spirit likes is always serenading me taking all these songs from because I've listened to so many songs in my lifetime but all tweaking a few of the words but this one was, why don't we live together, taking the spirit's ride, side by side, sailing through stormy weather. And it just went on and on and on. And and that's the feeling in my heart, uh, is why don't we live together. In fact, it, it seems to be a quantum kind of live together, because it's not a live together like... Uh, a man and a woman, and mm. getting a little house with the white picket fence, and you know, there's something the mind tries to associate and make a place in time and space that it can call home. And even we have the Wizard of Oz, you know, mm. from a linear perspective, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. She was so happy. Dorothy was so happy to go back to Kansas, mm. to the farm in Kansas. But, but this, why don't we live together? That I'm feeling is like living together in this divine sense of divine mind, or living together in the heart. Uh, home is where the heart is. And so, you know, wherever it seems to be, and the body of David has been traveling for a quarter of a century, and uh, I was noticing that, even the Spirit was saying, here you are back in California, seemingly looping mm. from where I, I first took off and was in California 25 uh, years ago. So it was just like mm. Truman Show on a the forms are on a loop, I'm looping back around, but this home feeling, feeling taken in to people's homes. Oh, why don't you stay with us? We have an extra couch, or oh, we have a bed, we have an extra room, please come and stay. Uh, mi casa su casa, uh, oh, come back, anytime, our home is your home, we love you. You know, when you hear that over and over and over and over, it it really helps instill and, and give you a certainty that you have a home anywhere you go because you're like, you're bringing the love and you're receiving that love and it's a feeling of connectedness and home. And, uh, and that happened too the last time I went to Northern California because mm. I met Tamara for the first time. I'd, I'd read uh, a bit of her book, Double Vision, that uh, when I would mention it to her, she, her eyes would roll. When I mentioned it to Judy, her eyes would roll. It was a mother-daughter book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they were raw. Both were very raw in mm. putting this book together. In fact, there were so many stories and miracles around this book. But And I had a great lunch with her. And then at the end, tour for, through her house. She had some, like, some of this uh, artificial grass in her bathroom. Very unusual uh, <laughs> rooms and very adorable. And then she said there with her and her son and then she said oh and here's our guest room come and stay David anytime you want mm. this room is your room you can just come and enjoy it it was the same thing and to me that's that song why don't we live together we're just encouraging this sense of feeling relaxed feeling connected feeling at home mm. wherever the body seems to be whatever the circumstance seems to be it's very still when you go into that because there's not any kind of uh, trying to m look for something better. Not the sense that you have to move on. Any kind of um, sense of restlessness is always of the ego because mm. the spirit is always perfect still rest. And so you can be aware if you start to feel a little restless like, like oh, something needs to change or something needs to be different. You can just say peace be still, peace to my mind, be still. There's no need to seek outside, there's no need to seek for something better. Yeah, it's mm. very relaxing. I almost feel that's exactly the point of this show. I feel like everyone who comes, comes for this hour of pure devotion that there is nowhere else they're supposed to be, there's yeah. nothing else they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Even if discomfort arises, they don't, there's nothing they need to do to fix it. And 
I I've told them again and again how at home I feel just with them all in this mo in this moment. It's yes. not a place. Yes. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> um, and I, it's it's everything, and it's everything I I I thought I needed to seek for. Yeah. You know, and that recognition is just so powerful because. It's 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 like a lover saying it's always been these arms and they're right here. Just yeah. lean into it, and you know, and that's why I think that Shania Twain song <laughs> yesterday. I was I played it for hours. That Shania Twain, I played for a song. I don't know if you know what it's called now, but there was something about I'm I'm keeping you in my arms forever, and yeah. it was like that feeling. You yeah. said, "Let's just live together. Like yeah. just just always and always be in this experience because because there isn't anything else." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that this show is interactive too, because now yeah. I'm, I'm just going to look out. I'm going to look into all of your eyes. I'm doing some eye gazing with all of you there. <laughs> it's not often you can do that. This this video this may show up as a video on Facebook or YouTube <laughs> or something, but but we're just doing a live eye gazing. <laughs> mm. We have <laughs> our little beautiful. virtual eyes there yes. to show us virtual eyes, where and they you are. can see your faces. And I can wave, <laughs> and I can see the little, everyone waving back. It's like we're living together. We're, we're all in one digital, we're in like a, uh, a, a quantum room together, and our little digital selves are smiling and waving at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and it's beautiful. And, and I think that's the way it continues on. It's like when we have... Um, we could call them retreats or festivals or whatever. You know, you're all invited to to come, and it's that it's again that same feeling where it's no different mm -hmm. than this. Nothing's any different, and we have no clue what's coming or how things will play out. But but we just love the the joy of it all and the spontaneity of it all. And I like that interactive feel of being able to do a little eye gazing in the middle of the show. <laughs> 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 it's very yeah. intimate and they're very receptive like yeah. I can f I feel my heartstrings like constantly in eh, harmony with everyone <laughs> yeah yeah I know it's fun they're all like strings on the instrument we can yeah. see all the strings <laughs> <laughs> is there any is, do we, we take can questions talk a question or, yeah I was just is there anybody say. that has any uh, questions or comments or Anything you want to share? Put your I have a question that was chatted in. Chatted in question. From Victoria. Mm -hmm. She was wondering, kind of like the bodhisattvas in the Buddhism tradition who s stay in the illusion to help others, she wondered if you've made the decision to stay in the illusion like the bodhisattvas in Buddhism. Well, it it's kind of harkens back to that thing, teaching from the Bible about be in the world but not of it, but I never related to that. <laughs> at all. Honestly, I don't feel like I'm here. Uh, I feel like I'm watching a, it's a surreal dream and I'm, I'm just aware of dreaming and I'm very happy to be dreaming. Uh, but um, it, it also is awareness of, of illusion just because that's where you stay defenseless, that's where you stay happy, that's where you stay joyful, is, is not being invested in any I images or appearances. You're not invested in outcomes. Uh, and we all know that's how the ego works, you know, the ego is like bigger, better, faster, more. The ego is always interested in outcomes and numbers. You know, even with the TV show, how many people are, are, are tuning, in. tuning in? What are your ratings? Well, we what are we? We don't have Nielsen ratings. We rate between like twenty and thirty, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, but they aren't. Is that million? No. Thousand? No. Twenty or thirty? Yeah, twenty or thirty. That's it. <laughs> That's what we've got. But see, it doesn't matter because it could be twenty million or two hundred million or or two hundred trillion. It wouldn't really matter. Uh, zero times any number is zero, and and it's the love that counts. It's the love, not the the numbers. Mm. And isn't it delightful to live your life uh, be, be transcending numbers? Wouldn't it be? Just think how much fun it would be if the numbers in your bank account uh, didn't matter. If it was uh, zero or 
a hundred or however many zeros or or even with uh, debts, you know, people go, oh, debts, and where the numbers all matter, it, it's just a light, it's a very light way to live where you're focused on your purpose, you're focused on your happiness and joy and not on numbers. So, I think it's, I, I would say um, more, uh, I haven't chosen to stay in the illusion for the benefit of my brothers and sisters, I have chosen to stay aware of dreaming and seeing the false as false mm -hmm. and not taking illusions as the truth. That's uh, my, my uh, purpose and my decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other decision, or decisions? <laughs> Any other decisions questions. out there? Questions? <laughs> Go ahead, Candy. Oh, hi everybody. Hello, David. Hi. Um, hello, Sarah. Um, so wonderful to be able to talk like this because I'm new to this whole LM situation and I'm very grateful for it. So thank you for this opportunity to ask questions. Um, one of the things that I'm trying to figure out in my mind is the how to reconcile working like I'm, I'm on a bit over halfway through the workbook lessons, and um, oh, I think uh, I'm starting to um, hear more the guidance, the voice of God. Um, but I get into situations where I feel a bit conflicted inside because there are these, you know, responsibilities, obligations from this world that we live in. Um, say, for instance, work, that, that's one of the things that I have a bit of an issue with. Um, and several things are happening there. there. Obviously, I have deadlines that I have to meet. Um, I have to email my students because uh, I'm, I'm, I teach at the college level. Um, I have to do my coursework. And then there are moments when I feel like, oh, I should maybe listen to this prompt that I'm getting that I believe is coming from, from the Holy Spirit and yet I have this deadline that I have to meet or I have these things that I have to do for my work. So, so there's a conflict there inside of me and, and, and I go back and forth, back and forth and sometimes I, I decide, okay, I'll just go with the prompt and somehow the rest will, will clear itself. Uh, I will be guided to resolve whatever needs to be resolved, but then there are other times where I'm so scared of doing the wrong thing that I I feel so immobilized almost. So, so, so that's one part of the thing. And the other part is that what I teach is business. And the more I delve into the course, the more I do the lessons, the more I notice that's not what I want to be doing, teaching business. It's so contrary to what I'm learning in the course. And yet, a part of me feels like, okay, maybe that's what I need to learn to accept the fact that that's what it is right now. I don't know if that's the right approach. So I, there's a lot of conflict and confusion in my mind right now. So any, any insight, uh, I would appreciate really, really very much. Yeah, thank you. Well, I think I'm, I'm glad you raised that because as you keep going deeper with the Course, you will see Jesus saying things like, you may notice how different the goal of this Course is from the goal of the world. All of the goals that we have as, as a self-concept, as a substitute identity, are all based on time. Uh, they're based on a productivity that's based in time, not on being happy, uh, not on being peaceful, but on being productive. Earning, attaining, possessing, accumulating. Uh, those are all ego goals, every last one of them. There's not a single spiritual goal in the things I just mentioned. Uh, and peace of mind, beautiful inner peace, a peace that passeth the understanding of the world, that the Bible talks about, That's, that is the goal of the Course. In fact, Jesus actually makes it clear in one of his review lessons in the workbook where it says, The peace of God is my one goal, the aim of all my living here, the end I seek, my purpose and my function and my life 
while I abide where I am not at home. Meaning that in, in eternity peace isn't even a goal. It's just, it's a state of mind. It's the sta state of reality of, of the Kingdom of Heaven or this, of Nirvana. But in this world it becomes a goal because the mind is so scattered and it believes in so many things. So, when you were talking, I'm glad you brought up that example of work because, uh, yeah, I think most all of us have had work experiences, whether it's working for money or working in an exchange for staying someplace or whatever. There's, we all have had this experience of work, and when you were talking, I was I was remembering this beautiful book by Khalil Gibran called The Prophet, mm. and uh, it was a tiny little book that I read years ago. And he said, when you work, work with love. And uh, meaning to me, if if there's something that's going to come through you, even as a channel, uh, that seems like work. Work with love. Let let love be the inspiration behind it. And for most of us, initially, when we think of that, we go, "Well, I don't know if everything I'm doing all all day, as far as work, is loving. Uh, if I'm teaching business, uh, then and business is about you know making money, uh, making a profit, uh, and." And Jesus is saying, "What profiteth a man if he, if he, you know, lose the whole world or gain, gain the, the whole, whole world, world and lose his soul? Uh, you know, you sense there's a different motive in there for forgiving and for living this life. So, what I have discovered is when I kept listening to the Holy Spirit." Uh, I was prepared to be called out of the world. When I was told Jesus said, I'm calling you out of the world, I said, I don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm certainly willing to go in that direction. And it really was coming to see that they're coming to a state of mind where there's no conflict in your mind, and therefore, since the world is a reflection of your mind, then there's no conflict, you don't see conflict in the world anymore either. It's just coming to that peace, peace of mind. Now, as an example, I've taken these, the Course very, very sincerely, so I've followed and done exactly what it said to do. And, and then, at some point, I was so guided by the Holy Spirit that, that the Course itself was just another prop uh, on the stage, and nothing more than another prop. And as I look around, I'm, I'm in a studio talking to you that, that I know the story behind the studio. This was a garage. This used to be a garage door, and 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 I see the padding, the soundproofing on the wall, and the green screen behind the curtain, and all this and that. And I watched all this come, and I look around me, and I look at I look at Sarah, and Sarah is sitting right here with me. This is her work. This is this is what she does for a living. I look over. There's Nicholas, a young man. What is it? Twenty-two years old, and he kept writing to me, you were in university, I think, up in Canada, mm -hmm. and he's sitting here smiling, that's his work. And then I see Luce, and she's come from Holland, and uh, she's sitting there, and she, her knee's up, and she's holding her knee, and holding her leg, and she's sitting, that's her work. And, uh, and I go around the room with everyone who's here, from every place that they've come, and this is their life's work. They're in their life's calling, uh, and they're in happiness doing it, and they're in harmony because the form of their life is just a reflection of them answering the call. And this is no different than 2,000 years ago. I mean, when Jesus walked around and called the apostles, he, all he said to them was, follow me. Uh, most of them were fishermen, so they fished for a living. And then we know uh, that uh, Matthew was uh, a tax collector. Uh, that he was in, in the business world a little bit more than, than just grabbing fish, getting fish. You know, he was like collecting currency from people for the government and and so forth. And and they people had their different professions, but but he was basically calling them out of the world. He was calling them back into a harmony with the Holy Spirit. 
so that everything you think and say and do teaches all the world, so that there's no contradiction in your life. And I would say too that that's, that's a big training because this whole world is based on exchange and reciprocity and we do have examples throughout history of St. Francis and Mother Teresa, of course Jesus, of those that lived in divine providence where they, they just didn't have that question, how will I be provided for? They trusted God to provide. Uh, when I would share that with certain people, they would say, but, but okay now, but that's fine, but how do you make a living? You know, they, they don't actually see that the divine providence is the living. And there, there is nothing else outside of that, you know, it's the flow. So I'm glad you're bringing this up because, because this course will undo every bit of ego thinking and it will take you into a, a sense of being sourced, moment by moment, just sourced by this divine light and love. And it's so much joy and there's so much happiness with that. and. And you will actually forget your previous states of mind, where you were concerned or conflictual, and you had lots of questions. You know, those will start to fade and fade and disappear until they're just not thoughts in your mind at all. You know, you, you have just a total transformation of mind, and, and that will be gone. So for me, yeah, the question of more never enters. The questions of how will this happen, it, it doesn't even enter my mind. It just It's like a, a symphony is playing and everything is working out perfectly always and there's not a part of my mind that's trying to uh, even understand that anymore. I've just accepted, oh, this is the way it is. Uh, I don't have to uh, try to figure it out. It's, it's just there. It's always there. So I think you've asked a very, two very practical uh, questions in there, because um, when you give yourself over to this and you keep following those prompts, those little nudges and prompts, and I can certainly relate with what you're talking about, because uh, I had the same thing, and all of us here mm -hmm. can relate to what you're talking about, because you're just describing your daily life, your daily experiences as you perceive it right now, and as you keep releasing those beliefs that are sponsored by the ego, your perception of yourself and of everyone will will change completely uh, in the most glorious way uh, possible. So when, um, like I, I experience moments where I lose track of time, for instance, not in a different way, not the way it used to be, or sometimes it's more like, I think I have thoughts, but I don't have thoughts. Very strange things in my mind going on sometimes, or sometimes I'm just sitting there, maybe after after this show, or after having done the movie night and then the discussion, I'm just sitting there, and I, I don't feel sad or anything, but tears are just coming up and pouring out and I'm just saying to myself, not to myself, I'm just saying thank you God, thank you, thank you, thank you. I guess my mind is trying to understand what is happening. Are those moments where, where I'm connected? I don't even know how to describe it. Are those kind of like small peaks that I get into what actually is reality? Is that what that is? Yes, that's, that's exactly it. And, and you're able to describe it and articulate it so well now, but a lot of us had a lot of those moments when we were children, when we were playing, and we'd go out in the sunshine and we'd be playing with our friends and, and we would lose track of time. We would, we would lose track. It was so much fun. It was so much joy and love and laughter that we, we weren't articulate maybe to be, to be pondering and talking about, you know, we're letting go of time or anything. It was just, we, you know, Oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't even think of what time it was, and and it does it does go that way. Uh, it's like that Chicago song, "Time." Does anybody really know what time it is? Care, 
Does anybody really care about time? You know, it's a, a famous Chicago song where where even in the song it's it's noticing about more being carefree about time and not wound into it. And and linear time is at the bottom of the whole ego belief system. It's the bottom the bottom of business, it's the bottom of competition, it's the bottom of comparison. Uh, I just saw a clip too uh, recently from the Golden Globes where Jim Carrey was getting up and and he got up to the podium and he was poking fun at the whole award system. Uh, he was poking fun at, at this identity of being, you know, Jim Carrey, two-time Golden Globe Award winner. Uh, and you can see Denzel Washington and all the actors and actresses laughing hilariously because it was like he was playing The Emperor Has No Clothes On right in the middle of a broadly telecast uh, TV show to millions of people. He was poking fun at the whole thing. And of course, Jim has had some really powerful mystical experiences and and he's not afraid to uh, share them and the spirit will come through right on live uh, television now to poke fun at the whole thing. Uh, so we live in a, a glorious time where we are called in, as part of the wake up. The people I've worked with for the for a lot of these last 25 years, I mean I've traveled a lot so I would meet people in their homes and living rooms and backyards and basements but the people that I've, I live with and work with, so to speak, in community, uh, they've all been going through this undoing and unwinding. And I did a website many years ago called Teacher of Teachers in honor of the Holy Spirit uh, at MiraclesHome.org and then eventually uh, we turned that into a book mm -hmm. which is uh, Unwind Your Mind Back to God, Experiencing A Course in Miracles. And now I get to travel around the country and the world and there's online Unwind Your Mind groups, there's people that come up and they've got the book in their hand, like the, the guy, Swedish man I was talking about, and there's twinkling and they're so happy and they're saying, this book has helped me so much to practically trace back my thoughts into my mind and let them go. Uh, to, to just let go of everything, and it's it's helping me work it all out. Nicholas has brought a copy <laughs> an example, of it. even a little spiral. <laughs> it, the little spiral came to us about it, like an unwinding. Uh, so we're all right in full swing of of this great awakening, where we don't have to think like we thought in the past. We are not locked into these old ego goals which we felt kind of trapped with anyway. You know, they never felt completely, our heart was never totally in it. But now I feel my heart is in sharing this joy and the people around me are are very much into not just reading the book, but to actually having these insights and experiences in their mind in which they feel like they're sourced. They're continually sourced by the Spirit, not by by the past and by ego demands. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, personally, I've been feeling this need to to do something like what you do, right? Uh, all of you. Um, but there is that fear that, oh my God, I, I, I have these issues, like I have had health issues now, everything is, is, is developing very, very nicely, very well. And I think it has to do with the fact that I'm, I'm studying A Course in Miracles um, because I started getting better when I started doing the course. So mm -hmm. for me, it's like, okay, that, that's proof enough for me. Um, but then this fear because of all the, uh, well, you know, I have debt as a result of all the medical expenses I had before. Um, and then I have work and I need my work to be able to pay off the debt. And then Jason was telling me yesterday, because Jason's here in, in, in Vancouver, in Canada, and he was saying, well, you know, the concept of uh, saving money and having debt, it's all the same, but my mind doesn't get that yet. But um, so there are all these fears in terms of following that call, because I think it is a calling um, to 
give up the business side of things and start doing something on this end. And sometimes I think, well, maybe I need to unwind more before I can start doing something like that. And yet that is timeline thinking, right? So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to ask here. I guess I'm just trying to say that confusion, do you need to be clear in your mind before you take that step? or? Or do you just, if the prompt is really coming over and over and over again, do you just say yes to the prompt and then wait for the Holy Spirit to guide you? What do you do? I, I, I always ask the question, what do you do? Maybe it's the wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're, you're definitely on the right track because if a, if a prompt, a prompt, a nudge keeps coming and coming, there's something to it. But also, just, just like when, uh, students are working with teachers in their education, you know, and they have a curiosity or a question, they'll they'll join with somebody that they resonate with or they respect or someone who seems to be uh, a demonstration of it, you know. Like we would never ask all of our teachers our questions, but the ones that we were really respectful of where we could we could see that they they were really demonstrating a integrity. And I always felt uh, good about asking questions of my professors who felt very integrous. And so th we're very much into joining and praying together and and you may have a nudge or a prompt and then you may have some some doubt about some aspect of it, but when you join with somebody you love and respect and you pray together, very much like two dear friends going out to lunch and one friend saying, you know, I'm I'm starting to feel like there's something that I want to do, but I'm not sure about it, and I've got some hesitations. And you pour your heart out to your good friend there at, at the lunch. And then your friend says, well, I, I know you, and this and this and this, but they may, you know, spirits can speak through people, it can come to us in so many ways, but if there's a sense of trust and honesty and respect, then we, we can take that step and it, it helps to just run it by, to talk about it. So uh, I know that that's been important for me, and um, in my life too, I, I just was so devoted to the Course that, that I, I, like Helen Shuckman, I had Jesus in my mind speaking to me, so that's my friend. I would, wouldn't do it at breakfast and lunch, I did it all day long. Well, what about this? Well, what about this? Well, money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, you know, and I would say all kinds of things to Jesus as if I was just sitting across from him at the table and and not hold anything back, just tell it to him straight. And then he would have the most wise things to say. Uh, he would say, oh yes, I, yeah, yeah, I know you believe that. Like, money doesn't grow on trees, I would say to him. He says, I know you believe that, but if you follow me, then um, I will provide for you in very practical ways. Uh, and not that you'll necessarily be going and picking money off trees, uh, but he, you know, I will. It will come sometimes in unconventional ways, so you have to be prepared uh, to open to receive. And I thought that was a good answer. I said, "Okay, I can do that." So that's the way my life went, and I, I feel, yeah, it's a blessing if you have uh, Jason and Emily up there. I know they've got a big weekend retreat coming, and to go there, ask your questions. Um, and uh, everyone that's part of the ministry is just so transparent. Uh, you know, wears their heart on their sleeve, and their life's an open book, and and is transparent because they see how valuable and helpful that is to releasing guilt. And so, just take full advantage of that. Um, and then I think, you know, we still have these kind of interactions and Skype and phone and. As you move along, your the the answers will come, and you'll you'll have the support you need in every single step of the way as you go along. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. Thank, thank you so much. Kathy. I words cannot describe how grateful I am. Thank oh, you. That's beautiful. We feel it. Hmm. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah, uh, <laughs> this has been just wonderful, David. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's always a joy. There's no expectation. We don't know what will come. And I just sit here just open eared <laughs> and hearted yeah. to listen and yeah, find yeah. out. So yeah. feels lovely. Did you want to give us a song out or do you feel you feel just full of the the joy that yeah just the two of us so yeah. thank you very much for thank joining you. me today and yeah we never know you might slip in sometime yes. during the week again That's we'll right. just I'm here watch this, week, this space so. yeah and so for anyone new who's just joined us today um you are watching um uh, lm virtual which is part of livingmiracles.org if you go to livingmiracles.org and click the lm virtual button you'll see all of the different shows that we have running in the week this one's called awake in the heart and it's on at 10 a.m. every morning, Monday to Friday. And then we have Frances Zhu at 5 p.m. on Fridays, where she goes deep into the mind. And you can write to her at francisszu at livingmiracles.org. And you can pour out your heartfelt question or the theme you'd like her to speak upon. So we've got um, movies and different things coming during the week, but we'll tell you about those later. So, so lovely you could join us on Periscope, whether on LM Virtual or on David's Periscope. And to all of our Zoomers, much love. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.